Okay, so your question is, you put 2C, I guess 2C plus 20, and 2C minus 20? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. That does factor that way. Uh, we do want to be in the habit of factoring completely, which means factor it down to all the you know, parentheses that we can factor down to, and also um, factor out any common factors, any common monomial factors that they have. Okay. Um, so this could be like on the road toward complete factorization. Um, like let's just cover this right one up for a second. What about this this guy here? Do they have anything in common that we can factor out? What do they have? We got a two. There's two times c plus ten, right? And then now, uh, you know, that one for a second, do these have something in common? Two as well. So this is two times c plus ten times two times c minus ten. And then if we just kind of arrange things differently, we can put the two over here with the two. It's all multiplication, doesn't matter the order. Four times c plus 10 times c minus 10. Or at the very beginning, what do those two factor, what do those two have in common? What factor do they have in common? These two right here? A four. We got four times c squared minus 200 or sorry, 100, 200. Okay. And this is a difference of squares, c plus 10, c minus 10. So either way you want to go, um, I guess it would depend on the wording of the question. If it says factor completely, well then technically this would be completely factored. But this is factored, it's correct, it multiplies out to the original, so um, depending on the wording, let's see what it says in the wording. It just says factor, it doesn't specify the solution. So you could argue that's correct. Yeah. The fact that it is correct, so you can't argue with that. Um, any other questions? All right, number 32, solve an equation for t negative 3t squared equals Negative one over three. Okay, so we're going to solve equations like this, the quadratic equations, not just simple linear equations. And we're going to use factoring to do it. Well, there's one really important thing that we do before anything else. Because we want to have zero on one side, yeah. Okay, that is very important. Okay. Um, several different ways we can approach this. We need a difference of squares, right? so then maybe we should reorder this. 108 minus 3t squared equals zero. Okay, and then go from there. Now it is something minus something. It's a difference of squares. Well, it's, it's on its way to being that way. Do these two share any factors in common? A three, so. Three, we'll say 108 divided by three. 36 minus t squared. Okay, what do we have here? We have two squares, right? So this is a difference of two squares, so how is that going to factor? if it was t squared minus 36. No. Then we do t plus 6 and t minus 6. six but it's 36 minus t squared, so it would be 6 minus t and 6 plus t. It doesn't really make a difference here. t plus 6 is the same as 6 plus t. But 6 minus t is not the same as t minus 6. So definitely difference there. Um, Now it's factored, it's set equal to zero. So what do we do next? Okay, has this been for 
quite some time now as we're solving these quadratic equations. <coughs> factor equals zero. Uh, six minus t equals zero. Six plus t equals zero. We won't bother to set three equal to zero. That'd be silly. We'll add t to both sides. Six equals t. We'll subtract six from both sides. t equals negative six. Instead of writing them in a different order, but put, to put the negative second, uh, let's factor out their common factor, but we'll factor out a negative 3. And okay, we factor the negative 3, we're going to have to switch the signs so that if we were to strip that negative 3, it would change back. So we'd have a t squared, negative 3 times t squared is negative 3t squared, minus 108, or sorry, minus 36, because negative 3 times negative 36 is positive. Now we switch the signs now, it looks more like normal. We get the variable squared first and the number second, so we can look at it that way. Negative 3 times t plus 6 times t minus 6. Set of both equal to 0, get the same solution, of course. We get the same solution as the sum of the problem. Does that help, Danielle? Okay. Any other questions? is these are not square numbers, right? And we're dealing with different squares. So I might be tempted to say, well, it's not a difference of squares, so you can't factor it. But we look at both of these terms and ask ourselves before we give up, is there anything that they share, any factors that they share in common? Times what? Nine. Nine. Uh, Thirty-two is eight times four. Nine is a square number. Four is a square number. Y is a square. Okay. So these are both squares. This is three squared minus two y squared. Three plus two y. common, and then maybe it'll turn into a difference of squares after that. Right, here to show me that you grasp this and we can do it on your own. I just did like in the problems, I'm doing them different. Mm -hmm. like,
Okay, first up, hopefully just a softball. Pi r to the h. And I'm getting right out of the air here. x squared minus 16. How does that factor? Okay, let's double check this. How do we double check and make sure this is right? Or see if it's not right? Yeah, go through it. Go through it. Multiply it out. Thank you. Thank you for not just telling me what we should write. Okay? So we multiply it out. We get x squared minus 2x uh, plus 8x minus 16. So there's a minus 16. But what happens that shouldn't happen, or what doesn't happen that should happen? Well, you combine the negative 2x and the 8x, you get 6. You get 6x. We wanted how much? How many x's? Mm -hmm. Zero. So the whole thing behind the, the difference of squares is that when you multiply them together, you get nothing here, like completely canceled out, which means these two things need to be completely identical in an opposite kind of way, like exactly the opposite of each other, right? One would have to be a positive version and the other a negative version, and they would completely annihilate each other. They have to be the exact same number, just opposite signs. Four? So we need a four and a four. That's why, because they need to be identical, that's why these two numbers have to be square numbers. So you take an identical number times itself, another identical number times itself, you have two square numbers. That's the only way we're going to get that middle term to cancel out. Back up to what did I just do? Okay. Uh, so we said 4, x plus 4, x minus 4. So we multiply together, we get x squared, um, let's say minus 4x plus 4x minus 16, those are x squared and our minus 16 and negative 4x and 4x cancel each other out. Leaving them with x squared minus 16 only. Okay, questions about that? So this could kind of sum up the whole idea of difference of squares. Um, let's see. Yeah, to get to, to be able to factor it like this, we need this to be a square and this to be a square, a perfect square. Five times five is twenty-five. If we put these two together in the same place, we get x minus two, x plus two. Uh, or do these two share a common factor? What factor do they share? Twenty-five. The biggest one they share is twenty-five. Then we get x squared minus four, right? Which is a difference of squares as well. Twenty-five times x plus two times x minus two. So either way you go, you can, if you do every step correctly, no matter which route you take, you should be able to get to the same, the same end. Okay. So, and when, if we're solving equations, we certainly 
would want to get all the way down to this, this would be much easier to work with than these larger numbers. So um, just a, a plus there. Okay. Any questions about that? Anything else? These ones are four, right? Yep. So we got eight points here. Score each out of four. Two for writing down, three for trying four. We're getting it right. And now for Brandon. Okay. So 9.8, last section of this chapter, uh, trying to put everything we have in our arsenal together and uh, factor some, some of the nastiest polynomials we can, we can possibly uh, factor, like with our current skill set. So that's what, that's what we're going to try to do. All right. Now, you're, you're not going to know how to factor this right now. We need to put it together. We need to put all our skills together to be able to factor something like this, all right? Um, so if you care to remind me, and we want to do this one exactly in a little bit, we can come back to this one. But before we can factor something like this, we need to go back a little bit and talk about common factors that we factor out, make sure that's strong, and then uh, build it up from there, OK? So let's. One. And let's start with um, 10x squared plus 25. Just start with that one. Okay. Now, is there something we could do about that? Can we <coughs> factor anything from both of these? Fine, okay. I'm going to write it a little bit differently so that. The next thing that we factor out uh, will not look as strange, but it, it is going to look strange. It always looks strange. Every time I teach it, it it's difficult uh, to grasp. Okay, so Brayton, can you tell me, when you say five, what do you mean five? Like, what is it about that, that these both have a five? They're divisible. They're divisible by five, okay. Divisible by five. Um, can you put it a different way? Is there like different words? Can anybody else put it differently? Right? They're, all, they're both divisible by five. Can we just put it differently? Use different math words. Divide both by five. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing as divisible by five. Uh, a common factor of five. Okay, a common factor that is a little bit different, right? Uh, okay, so what does it mean to have a factor of five? Seven times five equals both of them. Beautiful stuff. Down three checks so I don't forget. This is great. The word factor is very important. Factor, 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 factor. I say it over and over so that maybe you'll think, hey, I should remember about that word factor. And uh, not just like shortcuts around and stuff. Factor is a very important word. Said it a long time ago. I'll say it again and again and again. Factor is an important word. The definition of factor is important. And Sarah has already told us what the definition of a factor is. It's a very simple thing. If you have a factor of, say, 5, it means that 5 times something else makes you, okay, if you have a factor of 5. Okay? So 5 times something makes you if you have a factor of 5. So let's write it that way, and then we'll see it like, like come out, and, and we'll see it a, a similar way in a second. So we got 5 times 2 times x squared plus 5 times 5, correct? I have not still equal to the thing that I just wrote, right? They are the same thing. Okay. So now that I write it this way, we can see the 5. We can see the factor of 5 that each of them has. We can see the 5 that's been distributed to each term. And now we can take it out. We can undistribute it. Take this 5 out here. It would be 2x squared plus 5. Because if I distribute this 5 here, I'll get 5 times 2 times x squared. And I distribute it here, I get 5 times x5. Hopefully what I'm doing is, is boring you with oversimplifying the problem here. Right. So if you, if you don't see it that way, uh, then maybe now hopefully you do. Okay. You can see that factor that's a part of 10 and that's a part of 25. That's a part of each of those terms. So now we're going to look at a common factor that looks pretty different. You may not think of it this way. Think of it as a factor. And we're going to write another polynomial that each term has a common factor and we're going to factor it out. Let me show you. Uh, let's say we have 2x squared okay, times x plus 1 
That's one term, right? Plus um, three times x plus one. So now's the question. What factor do these two have in common? Right now you're looking at the two and the three, and you're saying they don't have anything in common. Two and three don't have any factors in common. Okay. But remember, one. one, they certainly have one in common. That's always true. And a little bit, you know, we don't want to write that down. We don't want to write out one and then distribute one in. But this is this whole entire thing is a term, and this is a term. We're looking for common factors. Right? What does it mean to be a factor? It means that you are multiplied by some other stuff. Okay? So you see how this we have this five times two x squared, and it's five times five. They have a common factor of five. So you see anything in those two terms that they're both being multiplied by? X plus one. They're both being multiplied by x plus one. 2x squared is being multiplied by x plus 1. 3 is being multiplied by x plus 1. They have a common factor of x plus 1. It sounds strange. We've, we've never really done it that way. We've never distributed an entire parentheses. Okay? But you certainly could do that. Okay? So let's factor out that x plus 1. Why don't you follow the example. Let's see you know, where, where does your brain take you? How does it see it? Does it see it correctly? Take the example here. You see how we factored out the five, how the, the five just gets distributed to both of these things. I'm telling you, Christine is right. They do have a factor of x plus one in common. Factor out that factor of x plus one. Rewrite it, okay? And I'm gonna come and see what you guys, how you guys write it. Follow the example. Okay, I'm just gonna show you what it should look like. And it'll confirm what you did, or it'll be like, well, how to do that? And then I'll talk about how I did that. All right, so x plus 1 is the common factor. We're factoring out. So factored it out. Okay. Let's see, I have x, squared, or x plus 1 times 2x squared. Well, then I, if I factor out x plus 1 from that term, I get 2x squared. And from this term, I get 3. Okay. So that's what it should look like. If you're sort of going like that, well, it's varying degrees of not correct. Uh, if you have x plus 1 here with no parentheses around it, that's not quite right because if I don't put parentheses around it, then the only thing that, like if I just found a piece of paper with this written on it, I would think the person wants me to distribute the 1, only the 1, and then whatever I get there, I'll just add x to that. And maybe if there's some like terms, I'll put them together. And if there's not, then I won't. So. We need the parentheses around the whole thing so we know this whole thing, x plus 1, is the common factor that we factored out. Um, now, when we look at it that way, does that look familiar? Have we multiplied things like that together before? I would say yes. Yeah. We distribute the x, boom, boom, we distribute the 1, and then we combine like terms, if there are any. Um, but, Doing it this way, it's just another way to make sure everything gets multiplied by everything else. Right? Anytime I have something outside the parentheses that I'm multiplying, okay, I'm just putting a bunch of blanks here, I take this thing and I distribute it to everything in the parentheses. If there's two things or three things or four terms or whatever, I just distribute it to all of them. Okay, okay well in this case, the thing outside the parentheses is another set of parentheses, x plus one. But we can still distribute it to both of these things, we get 2x squared times x plus 1 and 3 times x plus 1. We distribute the whole parentheses. If we wanted to just multiply this all out, then we could distribute 2x squared into the x plus 1 and the 3 into the x plus 1 and combine like terms. If you think about it, it's exactly the same thing as we do usually when we multiply parentheses together. Okay. But the, the lesson to learn here, 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 here is. Uh, you can have common factors that aren't just numbers and not just like a x squared that you can factor out of both of them. You can factor out whole sets of parentheses. Okay? Does that make sense? Like, give me a, a rating of one to five, how much sense that makes on a show of hands. Does it make one sense or five cents? 
Four cents. Four. Five cents. That's good. Four. Two. Okay. Good. Let's look at another one. Let's look at another one. Just like this, I'm just going to make up some new numbers. I'm going to give you a common factor that's parentheses. I want you to factor it out. Still working on getting there. It's going to help us factor that guy. Um, 5x squared times uh, 2x plus 3 and uh, minus uh, 4 times, what do you think I'm going to put right here? 2x plus 3, the common factor, a new kind of common factor, there's a whole set of parentheses there. There we go. So we've got the common factor of 2x plus 3, factored out, okay, just like we might factor out a 5 or a 7 or an x or anything like that. What are we going to distribute it into? Well, we the first term needs to be 5x squared times 2x plus 3, so we're going to need to distribute it to a 5x squared to get back up here, back to this original. Okay, what about getting this? Well, we need a, a minus 4, so that when we distribute this to the minus 4, we get negative 4 times 2x plus 3. And you might think like, well, we're just kind of leaving things undone. Shouldn't we distribute everything together and then see what it is? Um, well, it just kind of depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to multiply everything out, then yes. But if you're trying to factor, which is a little bit more difficult, uh, then no. What we're trying to do is let's do this. Okay. Get it factored as, as much as possible. So just to, to show you what we are almost able to do, I'm just going to go ahead and distribute this 5x squared and this negative 4. And then we'll have the polynomial. And then, well, you'll see what we have in a second. So we get 10x to the third uh, plus 15x squared. So that's what we get when we distribute the 5x squared. We're going to come over here. We distribute this negative 4. We get a negative uh, 8x and a negative 12. Okay, so there's a third degree polynomial that we now, now that we started in the middle, we at least see uh, this can be factored to look like this. This is the factored form of that. Okay, so if we start the middle step, we can get there. Now let's go all the way from beginning to end. Okay, it's a matter of turning this into this into this. Ready for that? I think. All right, got one head nod, no head shakes, so I'm just gonna go. Unless you wanna stop me. Okay. So now this is doesn't work for every possible polynomial. Actually, I didn't even think about doing it for this one. Uh, oh, I took this out, so it should be fine. So. Um, like I said, it doesn't work for every, like if I just write down random numbers, it's not necessarily going to work. But this is one approach that will work for some polynomials. Um, it's called factoring by grouping. We're going to write the powers in descending order, which this already is, right? The third power, second power, first power, no x term. We're going to group them, okay? Just circling them to draw your attention to uh, one group of two and another group of two. And we're going to do something with each group. Is that a five sheet like that? It is. Yeah, it kind of looks like a two like All right. So what we're going to do now, in the first group, common factors. So do those two terms have a factor in common that we can take out? An, a what? An x? Yeah. Anything more than an x? Two x's. Two x's? Okay, an x squared. Two factors of x would be an x squared. So we factor out x squared. What are we left with in here? x minus 3. Okay, good. Plus, plus this other group, where we look at this other group, and we look and say, in these two, these two terms, that these two terms have something in common. What do they have in common? 
a 2. What's left here? Fx minus 3. Minus 3. And look what happened. We created two groups, and each group has a factor in common, an x minus 3 factor. Factor out the x minus 3, and what do we have here? You got it. x second plus 2. So when we, you don't have to circle it, that's not something you have to do, but I don't want to put parentheses around it because parentheses can get confusing. You start seeing parentheses, you start thinking distribute. Okay, so I don't want to use parentheses to group them. Just circle them, because that doesn't have any mathematical implications at all. Just circled some stuff. Right? So when you group them, you look at them as groups of two, two groups of three, we call that factor by grouping. I thought I'm going to quiz you on that, and like, but you know that name of it, but if I say factor by grouping, you know what I mean. Okay. So Can you handle one on your own, or should you, you should watch me do one more? One more. One more, okay. So this works um, primarily when you have an even number of terms, first off, because you need to be able to break it into two equal groups. Uh, two terms and two terms and three terms and three terms. We'll just do two terms and two terms. Okay? So uh, four terms all together. Let's find one that factors out kind of. Uh, Interestingly, Here's a group. Here's a group including this negative here. Now that we see it as two groups, we're going to look at the first group. First group first. And ask ourselves do these two terms have anything in common that we can factor out? What is that? What is it? H squared. H squared, perfect. H plus 4, H squared is 4, so H squared, okay. Second group, what's the second group? We're, this is a group, and we're adding on this other group. What do these two factors have in common? 25. And I would say, if the first term is negative, always factor out a negative. Okay. If the first term in your group is negative and you want a common factor to pull out, if this is negative, pull out a negative. So we'll pull out a negative 25. What does that leave us with in here? H plus. plus. Because we need this to be positive, we just strip the negative, then we'll get the negative 100. Of course, I, now that it's negative, I don't really need to say plus a negative. We can just say minus. So we got this group uh, minus this group. These two groups, these two terms here, do they have anything in common? H plus 4. We're left with H squared minus 25, yeah? Okay. The name of this section is factor completely. Is there any more, com any more factoring that we can do? down to where you have a, a first power there, it's not going to factor anymore, unless there's a common factor that you can pull out, which there should be because you did that in the first step. Um, what about this other one? Is this factorable? Yeah. 
always the trickiest thing about learning new things is putting the new things with the old things that you learned. So we're putting this thing with the thing that we learned in the previous class. Difference of squares there. So even after we get done the factor by grouping, there's more factoring. You can see here, x squared plus 2, this, this guy right here, that's not factorable. You can't factor that anymore. That's better than 1. But sometimes you'll wind up with something that you can factor further. Um, let me be quick. So in this one, I'm trying to trick you on a couple different levels. One of them, most of you caught, is uh, there's a difference of squares left where you get some factoring done, which you're able to factor that. But even before that, before anything, the first rule of factoring would be look at all of the terms before you start. Look at all the terms and see if all four of these terms have something in common that we can take out. Is there anything? 4x to the third, 8x squared, negative 36x and 72 have in common. They're all even. You can definitely pull out a 2 because we pull out a 4. Are they all divisible by 4? Yeah, they are. Okay, so let's factor that out first and then continue. Okay, 4 times. And we can't pull out any x's because this, this term doesn't have any x, so you know we can't distribute something with an x and then wind up with no x's. So what's, what's uh, this guy going to be? So the 4 times this is 4x cubed. x cubed? Just x cubed. How about this next one, since we get 8x squared? 2x squared. That's 2, 4 times 2x squared is 8x squared. Next, we need to get a negative 36 when we distribute the 4. Negative 9x. And last, minus 18. Mind you, at the very beginning, to pull out any common factors that you find. All right, now we're down to our four terms. When you see four terms, think maybe I can factor this by grouping them into two groups of two. So I look at this group, look at this group. Okay, and and from here I just kind of carry the four along with everything else. It just kind of hangs out on the outside, but then I move to the inside the parentheses here and factor that like I normally would. So we look at this group and we say to ourselves what? Or ask ourselves what? What do they have in common? What's the answer to that question? X squared is in common. We take out the x squared, we got x plus 2. x squared times x plus 2. All right. Here comes our next group. And on the next group, what do these two have in common? 9. And my advice, remember, when there's a negative, pull out a negative. Right? Pull out a negative so that that first thing inside the parentheses will be positive. So a negative 9 times x plus 2. Because negative 9 times positive 2 will get us negative 18. Okay, there's that second group. And again, now that we see that's a, a negative, we'll just say minus 9. Minus 9 times x plus 2. All right, here comes the four, it's tagging along. Okay. So we're gonna work on the inside of the parentheses here. Well, we have a term here and a term here, and do those two terms have any common factors? What factors do they have in common? Very good, very good. 
x plus 2. Okay, if we factor out x plus 2 from this factor, what are we left, or this, this term, what are we left with? Right here. <coughs> squared and next. <coughs> Minus 9. Okay, now I'm kind of like doubled up by parentheses. I don't really need uh, that outside set of parentheses. I'll go ahead and get rid of that. Before I needed the parentheses, because the 4 would get distributed to the, this term and the second term, separated by this minus sign. But now it's just multiplication straight across. Uh, no, they, they can't factor. I mean, we can write 4 as 2 times 2, but that is a little bit silly. Uh, x plus 2 can't be factored. Can we factor x squared minus 9? Yeah? What would it be? Go. It's a difference of squares. We still have our x plus 2 factor. We still have our factor of 4. And it's all done. Let's factor that completely. If you look at some of yours that I came around and said you, that, that you've done it right but it doesn't look the same as this, just look at each of your parentheses. You'll have some common factor that you could factor out of one or two or maybe all three of them. Or maybe one of your factors has, or one of your parentheses has a two. The other one has a four. <coughs> okay. Now, now that we can factor something like that, we can also solve equations that have that kind of factoring necessary. The easiest one would be, let's say we just take this and set it equal to zero. Right? That's the thing we need to make sure of, is that the other side is zero first. So it's equal to zero, and so we would factor it, right, all the way down still. 0 equal to 0 equal to 0 equal to 0. Right. Now it's completely factored. And what would we do next? Make, make each of them, meaning each like factor equal to 0. 0. So this one turns out to have 3. We set 3 things equal to 0. You can solve those very, very simple equations, I'm sure. Here's the really important question. It's what I've asked many times before, and we've answered many times before. Let's see if we remember. Because here's, here's the point I want to make. Um, how often do you think you're going to do this in real life? Never. Never. Some, maybe some of you might. <coughs> if you become math teachers, you'll do this about what are we now, seven-eighths of the way through the year. So seven-eighths of the way through your algebra class, you may do this if you are an algebra teacher. But yes, in the real world, even if you did need to find the solutions to a third-degree polynomial, I doubt very seriously it's going to be factorable. You're going to have to solve it some other way, technology, and so you're really not going to be using that anyway. What I know the value is, the real value here, that the step, the, or, or the, the logical step between here and here, if we internalize it, and if the, the step that we make is not, oh, step uh, four to step five, I know what to do next. Uh, that's not really the value. If we make a logical jump from here to there, that'll make a, a, a wrinkle in your brain, it'll change you a little bit, it'll make you able to think about things a little bit. You, you examine, well, I know this is true, so then this must be true. This next thing must be true. Okay, so here's what I'm, here's what I'm saying. Here's my question. Why do we set each of these factors equal to zero? Not just why do we, why can we? It must, we, our mathematicians here were very exacting, very calculating, very precise. So it must be, there must be some absolutely true reason, absolutely logical reason why we would go from here, where this whole multiplication is equal to zero, then we set each of these things equal to zero. Can someone explain why we can do that? Why is that even allowed? Because for it to be equal to zero, one thing has to be zero. Yeah, it's a simple, simple answer, but it's one that, that a lot of people choose not to internalize, not just memorize, but there's a difference between, oh, I know I'm supposed to set each of those equal to zero, and, oh, I see, if, if
if I'm multiplying one, two, three, four things together, three of those things are mystery things right now. If I'm multiplying them all together and I get zero, the only way that can happen is if one of them is zero. So then I allow that to happen. I allow each of them to be equal to zero and then figure out what value of x would cause each one of them to be zero. Add three to both sides, subtract three from both sides, you get all three solutions. I think that is amazing. Like if you just started with this polynomial and I said figure out what values of x make this zero. Well, eventually you 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 could probably guess these, right? After a while. If you start at zero and maybe go one, negative one, two, negative two, three, negative three, and just kind of work your way out from there. But this process allows us to find solutions like, well, maybe later on, uh, uh, you know, a few weeks from now, we'll find solutions like uh, the number, the, the value of x that would solve whatever this particular solution would be like uh, 2 plus 5 times the square root of 3 divided by 7. Like we can find that solution because we use mathematical, logical steps. Um, so, and I, I don't know, that's really cool to me that we can use fairly simple ideas to find solutions to very complicated looking equations, okay? And even though all we do is figure out what values of x to this arbitrary equation will make it equal to, well, just make it true, uh, that's, that's an accomplishment. Your brain is working on this different level that it, it just doesn't really work uh, on that level. Um, unless you're really seriously problem solving. And you want to be problem solvers. Right? So there we go. My little soapbox rant officially over. Um, let me give you an equation to solve. So first of all, set equal to zero, that's good. We want that for sure. Let's think of it a second, just to follow it to its natural conclusion. Why does it need to be equal to zero? Because we're going to factor this, meaning we're going to write it as something times something times something times something, whatever. We're going to have a bunch of factors multiplied together. And all those factors multiplied together equal zero. That's great for us because if you multiply a bunch of things together and you get zero, you know absolutely uh, that one of those factors has to be zero for that to work. Now, if it was factor times factor times factor times factor equals 5, absolutely useless to us. There's no conclusions we can draw from uh, x times y times z equals 5. There's no reason why x would have to be equal to 5. There's no reason why y would have to be 5 or z. There's no reason why they'd have to be 0 or 1 or anything. Right? There is no conclusion we can draw from that. But if it's 0, then we know one of those three numbers has got to be 0, or all of them. Say that one of them has to be zero. That's the only thing we can say for sure. Um, it's definitely a useful thing for us to know. Right? So first, after we make sure it's equal to zero, we need to look at these two groups. There's a group, including the negative. There's a second group. First group. What's the first group have in common? A y squared. Okay. So we take the y squared out of the parentheses. So what's in the parentheses? Four y minus seven. Okay. Double check it. Always double check it. Right? I've uh, caught some mistakes out there with with all of you just by multiplying it back out, and you say, "Oh, yeah." I'm so confused. How they have y plus seven in common? Well, maybe you're confused because you can't see this y squared because I kind of crossed over it. No. You're not confused about that. Just like.
the the best answer that that makes me feel the best about it is just taking this y squared and distributing it back into the parentheses. Okay, we'll do that. So we got four y times y squared, four y times y squared. Well, what's y times y squared? Yeah. Right? Oh, okay. That's where we're supposed to get. And when we do y squared times negative seven, we get negative seven y squared. Okay, plus our, our next uh, group, next group of two, what does that group of two have in common? Four, what's that, Danielle? Four. Oh, four. Anybody pull anything different out? Just negative four, right? That's my advice to you. If your first number is negative, factor out the negative. Because think about what we want to have happen. When we factor something out here, okay, following me, when we factor something out of this group, what do we want this parentheses to be? We want that first thing to be positive, so to match with this, it'll be 4y minus 7, right? If we just factor out a 4, we're going to wind up with a negative in front. We don't want a negative in front, we want a positive in front. So that's why I keep telling you, if your first number in the group is negative, factor out the negative. In fact, anytime you're factoring a polynomial and you're taking out a common factor from all of them, just take out a negative. It just makes life a little bit easier. Okay, so take out the negative. If the first term, the leading term, the term uh, that has the highest exponent is negative, pull out a negative. It makes life a little bit easier. So pull out a negative 4. All right, negative 4 times what gives us negative 16y? 4. And negative four times is negative seven. Negative seven. Okay, that's a, that was a common mistake having a plus seven there. Make sure you got that minus seven. It's all equal to zero. All right. What factor do these two have in common? Four y minus seven. Y squared minus four is what we have left. Okay. Someone asked me as I walked around, did we set these two equal to zero? Sure, you have two things multiplied together that are equal to zero. So either this one is zero, is zero, or this one is zero. One or the other, some, one of those has got to be zero. So this one's easy to solve, right? Add seven on both sides. Divide by four, seven fourths. This one's another quadratic. You're going to have to factor it. But we can factor, right? Because it's a difference of squares. Y plus 2, y minus 2. Then we set each of these equal to 0 and solve. Negative 2 positive.
put up a video by the end of the day, just going through very similar problems to your homework. We have the work here alongside that one if you need some help.